Many years ago, Tony Sieber said some things about renewable energy and battery storage that he was criticized for. I repeated them years later, and I was criticized for them as well. Why? While Tony as has anticipated rapid changes globally, much more dramatic than are envisioned conventionally by economists and predictive analysts. Now he anticipates that all these industries will combine battery storage, solar, wind generation, and dramatically disrupt fossil fuels by 2030. His reasoning is based on the idea of rational deployment of capital in a free market. And his predictions do not require people to make choices on moral or environmental grounds. That's the key point. He believes that in a free market, the collapse of these legacy industries will happen because it is economically inevitable. That's a point that I've been repeating on this channel. Now, many people still remain skeptical. And I believe that is simply because they are unaware of what is happening right now. Here in Australia, in the month of December, there was two different states that had nearly 100% renewable energy use and there was so much solar power, some of it actually had to be turned off. In fact, one state with millions of people in it ran on purely solar power for 11 straight days. You know what's happening? Coal is dying and renewable energy is the reason. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Thank you for tuning into the channel. As you know, I focus a lot on the channel on how we power our EVs. So a lot of people say, will EVs crash the grid? Well, guess what? Uh, Norway's doing all right, aren't they? Yeah, interesting that. Well, I've got a video coming soon though on what exactly will happen, why it will happen and where we're going towards when it comes to EVs and the grid. But right now, some grids have too much power thanks to renewable energy. Now it's worth keeping that in mind. Too much power thanks to renewable energy. One of the biggest states here in Australia, South Australia, continued its record-breaking run on renewables, with wind and solar contributing just over 85.5% of the state's electricity demand for the month of December. Now surprisingly, the majority of that energy wasn't actually solar. It was wind. And the previous monthly record was 76% set in the same month last year. So we went from 76% to nearly 86%. By this time next year, it should be at 100%. And why can I say that? Well, because there's some pretty big batteries in that state that help with energy that help with stabilizing the grid when it needs to be, and it does from time to time. Now, big solar has actually smashed Australian generation records, destroying coal and really making a lot of people poor and a lot of others rich. Depends on which side of the game you are here. Now, we could all see this coming. I've been predicting on this channel that coal would die a very fast death, billions of dollars would be lost, but billions of dollars would be gained on the renewable energy side. So realistically, if people didn't see this happening years ago, Tony Sieber told them, he, told, he warned them, he told them what would happen, and they pretty much ignored him. So you can't really feel sorry for people if they decide to stick their heads in the sand. Utility scale solar notched its biggest month ever in Australia in December of 2020, delivering 1,509 gigawatts of renewable power over that period, compared to the previous high of 1,296 gigawatts set a year earlier in December of 2021. The new record was revealed in the latest monthly renewables data from Bystead, from Rystad Engineering, detailing the best performing large scale solar and wind energy assets around the country of Australia. Senior analyst in renewables research at Rystad, David Dixon said, it was a standout month for utility scale PV in New South Wales, with the state's monthly generation of both solar and wind topping 1000 gigawatts for the first time to reach 1,122 gigawatt hours 654 gigawatt hours from solar and 468 gigawatt hours from wind. Now there's a huge amount of wind generation being installed over the next few years. So that percentage will probably change to be about 50-50. According to Dixon, 11 of the top 15 best performing big solar assets in Australia in December were actually in New South Wales. 11 of the top 15 best performing 
were in New South Wales, helping to push the state's black coal generation to a new low. The squeeze on black coal, which is obviously terrible for breathing in and terrible for the environment, was helped along by operational demand in New South Wales, hitting a 10-year low due, due to mild weather and growing rooftop solar generation. The combination of high renewables output and low operational demand sent black coal generation down to 3.25 terawatt hours for the month, corresponding to a capacity fa factor of just 44% for the state's black coal fleet. And this is a big problem. This is a huge problem that I don't think anyone quite realizes the economics behind this. When I first heard Tony Sieber talk about this back, I think it was in 2014, he explained that the average for the coal industry is that if they don't, if they run below 70% capacity, they make a loss. So if they're running at 44.5% capacity right now, they're making a massive, massive loss. And the problem is, it's not like they have a choice. I mean, realistically, Governments are phasing this out because they realize the damage it does. It's not like renewable energy is coming in and saying, oh, yeah, no, 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 you can charge high prices because we're going to charge high prices. Renewables bring down the cost. I mean, there's one state in Australia where electricity hasn't changed in price for years. That state runs purely on hydropower, renewables only. Now, this is a sign of more to come, says Dixon, with the remaining 1.5 gigawatts of capacity at Liddell said to exit the market in the first half of 2023, meaning more coal will disappear in Australia within the next six months and be replaced by renewable energy. Now, getting back to South Australia, it wasn't just a record month. It was a record quarter. For three months, renewable energy contributed 80% of the grid. Now, there's no actual hydropower there. So this is just purely wind generation and solar, along with battery storage as well. I believe this is the only state in Australia that actually has Tesla's virtual power plant set up. So basically, if you own a Tesla power pack here in Adelaide in South Australia, then you can participate in selling your electricity back to the grid and make a profit out of it. Renew Economy reported that no other gigawatt scale grid in the world has come close to this amount of variable renewable energy for such a long time. So this is a world first, this grid. And it's amazing because this is basically a grid that had got a huge boost from Tesla. Years ago, electricity was a massive problem in this grid. It would just go out. Basically, the grid would collapse when on hot days when too many people were trying to take energy from the grid and they'd have just blackouts for days. So Tesla said, well, Elon Musk said, we'll build a massive battery there in 100 days. In 100 days, it will fix the problem. If we can't get it done in 100 days, we'll do it for free. Now, our prime minister mocked him. He said it was, he called it a big banana. He said it was a joke, it wouldn't work. Uh, he said that electric cars would ruin your weekends. He made all, he made all kinds of comments like this, right? But Tesla, they followed through. They delivered the project, and the reality was it made so much money for the company who actually commissioned it that they end up doubling the size of it only a few years later. Then the same thing happened in Melbourne. An even bigger battery pack was installed. Why was it installed? It was based on the success of the project in South Australia. That project has been integral to the grid being able to operate without having blackouts to be able, being able to operate with this mix of renewable energy and being able to operate in a way that experts said wasn't possible. Now, if you watch some YouTube channels, they'll tell you things like engineering channels. They'll say, what's happening in South Australia right now? It isn't possible. I can actually, if you want to, I can put some links in a further video showing you these channels where their engineering experts will tell you that actually this little project here, it's actually pretty big. There's millions of people in this state. It's physically impossible. Well, it turns out, they were wrong. And uh, I don't know how they got their engineering so wrong because they're meant to be experts. I'm not. I just see what's happening and I tell you guys about it. So as you can see here, this proves something. It proves that renewable energy can work when it comes to having 100% renewables and zero fossil fuels. It absolutely can work. With a combination of solar, commercial, rooftop, wind generation, and battery storage. Now, here's what's really interesting about all this, right? For this stretch of 11 days, 
more than 100% renewables were used in the grid with the mean price for electricity over that period of time averaging minus $3 per megawatt hour. Minus. So Tony Sieber was right. Marginal cost of energy is coming. It's only a matter of time. Now over that period, data showed that rooftop solar contributed a massive 26.3% and dominated daytime production, sometimes up to 92% of local demand. In fact, the government in that state went around turning off big solar and even apparently residential solar panels that were large because there were too much energy was being sent into the grid. There was so much power from renewables, they actually tried to turn it off without even telling people. I was like secretly turning it off. Now, the biggest contribution came from wind energy, though, with 67.6% share over that time, while large scale solar heavily curtailed because of negative prices and the impact of rooftop PV contributed just 6.1%. So as you can see, wind generation is actually incredibly important to a renewable grid. And fortunately, the cost of wind generation is plummeting. The bigger turbines that are coming out of the market, especially the offshore wind turbines, which are just astronomically large, you're looking at 250 meters long just for the blades themselves. These are things that are enormous. They can produce enough electricity for millions of homes just from one single turbine. And they're becoming more and more affordable and more and more efficient. Plus, the great thing is, wind actually blows harder at nighttime, so it perfectly complements solar. Now, the other thing to consider here is the emergence of lithium-ion phosphate battery storage. Tesla, of course, their production is massive. They've sold out for the next two years, and they're producing a huge amount at their factory in Lathrop in California. And then, of course, you've got all the, the companies in China producing massive energy storage as well. But in addition to that, those cheaper prices for lithium ion phosphate packs, remember the prices we've seen have been for nickel based chemistry packs for most of them. Most of them therefore had higher prices. Now the prices are coming down thanks to lithium ion phosphate. But lithium ion phosphate batteries require more lithium than lithium nickel based chemistries. And, and lithium is very expensive. And here along comes sodium ion battery storage, both for EVs and also just simply for grids like this. And the cost of these new batteries from CATL, they say, CATL is the world's biggest battery company, will be 30% lower even than lithium iron phosphate batteries. You can imagine how much cheaper it will be to go to a renewable grid than rely on our old antiquated burning fossil fuels. This is the key reason why, remember, that. Oxford University did their multi-year study with hundreds of academics proving that if we transition to renewables soon, we can save more than $10 trillion as a global economy. That's not to mention save the world from potentially heating up to the point where we cause it some serious damage. As you can see, it's very possible. It's happening. I mean, countries like Germany, massive amounts of solar output, Europe, Massive amounts of solar and wind output. Things are changing fast in a very positive way. So don't feel alarmed. Don't feel like the world's going to hell, going to hell in a handbasket. It's not. Things are improving with more government support. Places like Texas. Who would have thought Texas? Massive amounts of wind being rolled out all over Texas. They'll probably hit about 100% renewable energy by 2030. That's my prediction. But that will also mean that other states in the United States and possibly Canada and other places as well will see the success of that project and say, you know what, they can do it, so can we. That's what happened in Australia. Adelaide can do it, so can we. We saw what happened in Adelaide and now all the eastern states where most of the population is based are following in the same footsteps. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.